Okay, um, here we go. Battery configuration wiring options. Uh, for those of you who are new to this or uh, just want to confirm what you think you know, I'm going to go through how to wire 12 volt, 24 volt, 36 volt, and 48 volt configuration. So first of all, if you're building your little solar system, it's going to be under 2000 watts. Um, you're going to be in this range. This is going to apply to pretty much anybody who's doing the couple hundred watts on the van life uh, circuit or if you're in a mobile home uh, on wheels or RV motor home kind of tiny house deal. Um, this is for you. So uh, for the most part, the higher the voltage, the smaller the wire gauge. That's the first and foremost what you should take note of because uh, if you're building on a budget or regardless that's going to be one of the most expensive parts of wiring is is having to get a heavy gauge wire um, and that's one of the so that's the perk of going with uh, higher voltage and bulking these batteries together in series um, in order to create higher voltages so uh, roughly touch on that um, when you connect or what I like to call daisy chain of battery just by connecting it uh, positive to neg negative positive to negative um, what you're doing is you're creating a series and then on one far end of that series the negative is your source and then the other far end of the series your positive is a source um, so that's it that's that's basically it. You put four batteries in a row you can get up to 48 volts you do two of these strings of four batteries in a row and you run them in parallel which is connecting positive end to positive end and the negative end to negative end now you've created uh, a larger bank um, say for instance these are 400 amp hours now you have 800 amp hours at 48 volts um, but actually let me correct myself there the amp bar rating applies directly to the voltage so if uh, this was 400 amp hours at 12 volts when you convert it to 48 volts, it is now just 100 amp hours. Don't be like freaking out like you just lost a whole bunch of capacity. You still it's the same size. Uh, it's just uh, just how you how you do it, how you add the numbers together. Um, so at 48 volts, 100 amp hours is a whole lot more power uh, than 100 amp hours at 12 volts. Literally four times. Okay, pretty basic. Um, basic math, that is. If you suck at math, then I'll, I apologize. I'll try to go a little bit slower. Um, so over here we got a 24 volt, here we got a 36 volt, 48 volt, and then a 12 volt in this bottom corner. If you can't quickly identify uh, how that's achieving the voltage specified, uh, I'll break it down for you. <laughs> it should be kind of clear, but just in case it's not, uh, each color represents uh, a battery chain that's wired together in series. So here we have uh, two batteries per series, meaning we're up to 24 volts. So 12 volts times 12 volts equals 24 volts. And then we're doing five of those banks together. You can do this in any number you want. So you could do just two, you could do four, six, eight. Has to be obviously, or maybe not that obviously, um, in pairs so that you can uh, appropriately reach the um, increments for 24 volts. Do, um, you definitely can't do five batteries or three batteries or seven batteries. just doesn't work. Always in pairs. If you wanted to do a different number of batteries, you would try to fit it into one of these other configurations. Uh, so for here, we could do two. For three batteries, we could do one string of 36. For four batteries, we could do uh, two blocks at 24, or we can do one string of 48. Uh, it all depends on what your charge controller supports. So if your charge controller supports all the way up to 48 volts, there's really no reason not to go with 48 volts. Uh, like I said in the beginning, you're gonna be able to run smaller gauge wire, so that's gonna be a significant cost savings over uh, the ladder. Uh, so, okay, going back to uh, configurations here, uh, I'll start off with uh, the 12 volt. Actually, no, I already touched on this one, but uh, so that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, 
battery, 12 plus 12 is 24, and then this is going to be uh, 5 in series, so technically this is 500 uh, amp hours on 24 volts, or if you were to wire it in 12 volts, you would have 10 batteries at 100 amp hours, making it 1,000 volts. I mean, 1,000 amp hours. So that's what we got down here is uh, half of that configuration, which would result in this is parallel going here, and this is parallel down here. So there's no series in this configuration. This is 12 volt. Everything is just um, connected positive lead to positive lead and negative lead to negative lead. That makes one giant parallel connection and it stays at 12 volts. This is gonna be the hardest for wiring because you're gonna to have to have the thickest gauge wire for this configuration. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, going over here, you can do configurations of three, six, nine, um, and that puts you up to 36 volts and so on and so forth with uh, the, four, with the uh, eight batteries over here. So you can do four, you can do eight, you can do 12 if you wanted to. Um, but for most applications under 2000 watts, uh, there's not really, I can't foresee any reason to go over 10 batteries, um, or 1200 watt hours to be more accurate. Um, let's see, what else should I touch on on this? So if you're trying to determine what wire gauge you need for the internet connects, um, it all comes down to how much of a load you're going to put on the system. Uh, so for 12 volt system, I'll start with that because it's a little bit easier. Um, we figure what your inverter is, the total amount of watts that you could possibly draw on the maximum level. Um, say for instance, you have a 1500 watt inverter, uh, and let's just clear that. I'll start over. 1500 watt inverter, uh, and you also have. Uh, 480 watt uh, up converter so you can do 12 volt on your system which is what I have and then you're close to about 2000 watts what you want to do is give yourself a little bit of an overhead so add on 25 percent uh, dividing it by 0.75 uh, so we're about you know 2640 um, just under 3000 watts and so if I'm on a 12 volt system, you can uh, just Google uh, ampacity chart, wire gauge ampacity chart, and you'll get all sorts of different ones. But the important thing to note here is that it's not linear. So if your <clears throat> if your system has uh, set up and you're running eight gauge over, you know this specification of 80 amps, then it makes a difference on how long the wire is. So the longer the wire you go, the thicker it's got to be. Um, if we're in the range that I just talked about, as you can see, these wattage numbers I think are directly related to whatever this chart is made for, which is probably 12 volt. So I'm not going to look at that. I'm going to look at the amperage because the amperage is what's important. So to see what kind of amperage I'm running at, I just divide my number by the voltage that I've created. So if I created a 24 volt bank, we divide by that, 36, 48, and so on. Um, so I'm gonna do it at 24 just for a sample. And that gives me 110 amps. So I've got 110 amps flowing through those wires. I'm gonna always go with the next one up. Uh, so 120 amps is where I'm at and coming off all the interconnects um, I wouldn't make them any smaller than the actual gauge that's running to your inverter or main uh, supply so if your supply if your supply is four feet away I still would recommend taking it a step up either going with six probably six this chart seems to be missing a stage there's no six gauge and and there's no, no two gauge in here um, so just take it a step down or a step larger, smaller the number, the larger the wire. Um, so for example, here we are, 120 amps. I'm going to be six feet away, so I'm going to I'm going to go right in the middle because I'm going to actually do it four feet away, uh, but I'll take it down to six gauge, and uh, that will give me 
plenty of overhead to run all my appliances off that direct lead and what you want to do is uh, wire those positive and negative terminals to a little bridge um, that way you can connect you know your shunt and whatever else it is it's gonna be wired up there um, it's just a whole lot easier that way than having a whole bunch of wires connected to your battery terminal it's messy hard to access and um, it's harder to wire a battery shut off and what off uh, shut off what do you call it battery disconnect battery disconnect uh, so if you're gonna do that on the system it can be done between this main cable and your your post that will mount to your uh, uh, electronics board typically you're gonna want a nice big sheet of plywood to bolt all your electronics to and I'll give you a, a diagram under that video that explains all the accessories to the uh, solar battery system that you're gonna need including um, breakers fuses uh, meters all those sorts of things uh, so I hope this is the beginning of me having a little bit shorter videos um, I tend to run off on too many topics, so I'm going to try to make this one and all future videos more specific to uh, just one topic and then move on. Okay, that's it guys. Uh, hope that was clear. I'm going to run over it just one more time. Uh, got your total wattage, divide it by whatever voltage you get, you get your amperage, Google an ampacity chart, and look at the amperage you need bump it up one notch, um, look at the how many feet you're going to be running the wire, bump it up one notch from there. Um, that's the uber safe way to go. You can just bump it up one notch either way and maybe just stick with 8 gauge. Totally up to you. Uh, but my preference is to always uh, take it a double step down. Uh, that's it. Alright, have a good one.